glad to see you here with us this morning. I want to open up your bulletins right quickly. We'll read through these. We still got people coming in. So. Yeah, and we're glad to have everybody here with us this morning. And uh, pray that you get a blessing out of the service today. And uh, be much prayer for Brother Tom or Brother uh, Tom and Dan and Jimmy. And uh, we want to remember the families and friends of Terry Nelson that passed away. I think it was Friday. Some of you might remember Terry. He was here when they first started the uh, telecommunication fiber optic here in, in the, the telephone company. And I remember them from Texas. Also remember the uh, family of uh, Randolph Frederick. That remember that family this morning. All the, they will great, be greatly missed. Continue to remember all the names that's in our bulletin this morning as well, especially the lost. They need the Lord in their life more than anything in the world. Let's pray for our leaders, our churches. We stand on the word of God and the leaders. Look to God for righteousness and directions in our, in our lives. Uh, in our answered prayers, Gay Connell had a good report. It's great news. Wanda Barker is recovering quickly from her hip surgery. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, Brother Dickey's test had good results. And God still answered prayers. Amen. Uh, Doris' surgery also went well. And like I say, remember Doris this morning. She lost her soulmate, Brother Randolph. And uh, they need uh, prayers for comfort this morning. Had some birthdays in here this morning. And... Uh, Brother Dan is also still offering up the uh, correspondent courses, so if you want to, any of those, you get it with Brother Dan. And our, as I said early this morning, our school has gone back in session. Our backpack program is uh, underway, and you can bring your items. There's items in here, and it really helps out those kids that are in need. And there's some items in here that's the things that they we donate to them. And like I say, if you don't want to, if you don't want to bring the items, there's a box in the back. You can put your monetary uh, donation in there as well. Some good writings in our book bulletin this morning. Take time to read these. And our men's monthly breakfast and uh, deacons, elders, trustees meeting will be canceled this Saturday. Next is coming Saturday, and but it will be until September the 9th. Uh, some people will be gone. And also remember our Christ Pantry. We take up the crackers here at our church, go downtown. So uh, be much prayer for that. And uh, as Brother Ronnie and Charlene tells us, they're needing volunteers down there. So uh, from 12 to about 4:35. Yeah. So if you want to donate your time for that, you can do so down there. Is that one day a week or two? That's one day a week, isn't it? Mondays. Every Monday. Every Monday. Every Monday. And that's down at the uh, Christian church there at the uh, pantry. Turn to number one in your songbook, and I'll turn it over to Brother Jimmy. Yes, you want me to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. You want this over here? You want the stool? No, no it's all right. I'm going to stay in the lobby. Okay. Right. I'll pay you up for yeah. it. <laughs> uh, what's going on in the back? But that sounds good. Number one in this book. <laughs> y'all be all on the same page. I got up this morning and I thought everything was wonderful and I had a good attitude. I still got a good attitude. Fellowship. Good. And by the suit laid my clothes out. Boy, I was doing so good. I can't see well enough to. And then I get up here and the first thing is said to me when I come in this morning, Jimmy, you got your shirt on backwards again. I said, No, I don't I don't think so. I said it's on backwards. <laughs> Try to go to the bathroom and change shirts. I don't feel comfortable with this. And so, now we're going to go, 
we're going to have some fun. Being a Christian should be fun even though we have burdens. You should be happy. Let's turn to uh, number one in your book. This is an old song of the church. We got some oldies and goodies this morning. It takes me a minute to find number one. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith I can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and their spirits shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our trip. turn to the next in uh, your book. We forget numbers. Now, the, every song, you know, songs are changing. There's a lot of praise music out now, and well, there should be. But that shouldn't be the whole theme of the song. You need to sing songs and ask God to lighten our burden. And many times he does, and then sometimes he may let it be for a little while. Let me ask you a simple question this morning. If perchance your life ended today, and it will for some people, across this nation this will be the last day on earth that they will live. Basically, we all walk around, and we should. To be happy, we should just, we just should prep up, prepare for it, and then you can walk a little easier. And, and I've always felt that way about this song, Where Could I Go? Listen to the words. Let them speak to your heart. Living below in this so sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them, everyone. We get 
along its sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? You know, that's a, that's a good song. It touches your heart, or should. I don't go to my even my best friend. Well, some, I do sometimes. I promise. Basically, when I can't find the answers to life and what's bothering me, or, or maybe what someone else has said, and it doesn't matter, I go to the Lord. And just a simple prayer. Help me to get through this one. In my prayers, I don't ask for the Lord much. God is not a respecter of person. He doesn't give me any more than he would give you. He is fair. He is loving to all. But I ask him for strength. Give me some strength to get through it. Help me. Give me strength. I think that's all a Christian should ask for. Just give me strength to get to where I need to be. Uh, our homecoming this time, uh, it's good to see. Uh, I got that little old boy of mine. At least he used to be when he ran around here. And his mother had to muzzle him. That's part of growing up. Kevin and, and his wife, Kelly, and uh, they're gonna be a little closer to me and I love it, I love it. So I've got him and Patsy, if I can get another. They ought to take care of me just like a baby. <laughs> I've got a- I have calling reinforcements. What? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Listen, it's good to laugh. Church should not be a place where we're all gloomy, doomy. How many people do you think is going to follow you? That when you walk in strength and the security of God, they'll follow you. I've got a good friend here this morning. I uh, worked together for a long time. Tom Steele is especially acquainted with him. We talk over the phone all the time and it's Harold Keaton and I ask him to come to our home coming in here. He's here. Now he has had both knees replaced, his left shoulder, and they're looking at some maybe another. Bless your heart, brother. I've kept him my prayer. What? Huh? Harold, what did that brace, how did it fit? Oh, they called it a brace that had to work for six weeks. Uh, couldn't move my arm. They had to capture my body and I had to sleep on my back. And I've never been a back sleeper. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have much fun with that. <laughs> but I wanted to recognize him. Uh, he's, he's always been a good friend to me, but... I think we're a little closer. We get a telephone going. 
Anyone else that I haven't mentioned, if I haven't seen you in a while, I can't go beyond probably this second seat. I can't tell who you are. I can tell who you're out there. Anybody else that uh, is not? What? Stanley Franklin's back there. Well, Doc Franklin. <laughs> Son? You and me will get together right after this and you'll recruit it for two more years. <laughs> when I lived on Johnson Hill and, and, and uh, I started, I call you Doc? Right. Yeah, we used to. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we had an army. Amen, Doc? Amen. Amen. And we played together. Stanley was the youngest of the, of the army. And, but now he'd, uh, he'd, he'd mix it up with you. Yeah. But we had a lot of fun, and we still do. We talk over the phone, and I'm glad you're here today, Doc. God bless you. Anyone else? Really can't see. I've not failed. I'm sitting down. <laughs> Anyone else? Who? Who? Sheila and Red Fay and Kirby. I want to tell you something about this lady. There's, there's 13 steps from this landing to the bottom. And it would be interesting sometime, Sister Red Fay, to count the times that you've been up and down those stairs. She was our secretary here at Sunday school. And she'd done it for years and years. And then she got sickness in her family. Her husband got sick. Bobby Lewis, many of you know. I don't think she left him any time at all. You were together how many years, Renafe? Sixty-six. Sixty-six. You think about that. Sixty-six years. And she brought her babies here. And they grew into attractive young ladies. And there used to be a lot more boys hanging around the church. <laughs> but they were here and they went through it in their adult life and now they're, they're all fine young ladies. And I wanted to tell you that, Red Faye, how much I love you. She's like my blood sister. We're that close. She and Paula Hill and Joy Ruth, Paul and, uh, Paula and Joy are gone now. But I wanted to give you your roses while you're here in living, that you're loved and missed in this congregation. I think she goes to hear a grandson. Is that correct? I'd go, I'd, that's where I'd be if I could get a grandson. I haven't got one yet. I'll get one though. I think the little fellow's here today. He'll be a preacher or a politician. <laughs> I don't know which one, but I guarantee you. And I may never live to see it, but I guarantee you he's going to do that. Anybody else, Red, if I, you have something you'd like to say? What a good time today. Now, one? Is that what you said? Yes. My goodness. God looks for people that are faithful, and if you're just messing around, you can forget about or enjoying the, uh, the joys of heaven. You can forget it. God's looking for servants. And that's who's he going to come back and get. It's people that will serve him and love him. Just as they do in this life. Think about it. Anyone else? What did you say, Sue? George and Jeannie and Amy and Stephen. We're glad they're here. We're glad they're here. But they, they're here a lot. 
<laughs> this is homecoming, and they're coming home. They were in this church. They were born and raised and lived in this church. And it's a, been a joy to be with everybody in here. Everybody. I told somebody one time, it, it doesn't work, but in my mind, it's good for me. Jimmy Atkins loves everybody. And everybody loves Jimmy Atkins. On my part is all I can handle, and I do, I love you. Whether or not you love me, you have to make that decision. That's not my decision, how you feel about anything. That's yours. Okay, anybody else? They spirit again. <laughs> Anyone else? This is that. How do we do you sing it? Sing, sing, sing it when you do it. Okay. All right, we're going to sing this song. It is our prayer song. And after that, Brother Dan will speak a minute about prayer requests. If you have one today. <clears throat> so many today are drifting along and wondering in sin astray. They seem not to know the right from the wrong. Brother, it's time to pray. Brother, it's time to pray. Yes, it is time to pray. Destruction and woe wherever we go. Brother, it's time to pray. The dark clouds of war hang over Destruction is on its way. The perilous times are lingering near. Brother, it's time to pray. Brother, it's time to pray. Yes, it is time to pray. Destruction and woe wherever we go. Brother, it's time to pray. Won't we stand for the last verse? The pleasures of sin so many now crave instead of the things that pray. They're drifting on down toward death and the grave. Brother, it's time to pray. Sing it out, brother. church. Does anybody have any prayer requests? Dan, as we were singing that song and talked about those that seem not to know the right from the wrong, and I think we need to be very much in prayer for the church itself. Those that do know the right and the wrong that are being pulled back out. Absolutely. You said we need to pray for the church. I feel very blessed to be here. I was almost in an accident about 6 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Uh, ben Ray, Brenda, and myself were coming out from uh, Liberty Road uh, to the red light at 460, and uh, we, I was driving, and I was in the lane that was to go straight through the red light, and there was a Cassidy man who was in the right-hand lane to turn up, and live up uh, the hill, and a young boy who had just got his license, I don't know who he was, came down Index Hill uh, in a white pickup, to turn into Liberty Road, but he just turned it too 
briefly and just found right in to the man that was in this bird lane and knocked him about 30 or 40 feet up in that hill. He was cut in his neck here real bad and I was worried about the carotid artery because he was bleeding real bad. They took him to the hospital and I later heard that they released him. And the boy was, he was panicking and crying. I don't know who he was. And he said, uh, he said that uh, he couldn't move his arm. And so it was a really bad accident and <laughs> we were almost in it. <laughs> so I feel very blessed that we were not hurt, but I pray for them. Okay, well, Jean says she's thankful that uh, she narrowly avoided an accident. She's here with us today and we're happy for that. And, uh, and that there was an accident though and somebody got hurt, we need to keep them in our prayers. And as someone who rode home recently with a new driver that doesn't have his license yet, you know, I, I, I understand how it gets, it's a little nerve wracking, but he did a good job. Uh, any other prayer requests? Uh, talk to Anita Williams. This week. Just, I'm sorry, over here. Billy has oh. requested prayer for his family this week. Okay. So I would like everybody to remember them. Okay, remember Billy Johnson's family. <clears throat> Any and who else do we have here? Um, I talked to Anita Williams yesterday. I was inviting her to come to homecoming, okay. and she said that she would be going to see her nephew in Lexington who had a brain bleed. He's on a ventilator and she asked that we remember him in prayer. He's Brad Manning. He uh, actually graduated from high school with James and Lee and Chris. Okay. Remember Brad Manning? Uh, that's a nephew of Anita Williams and uh, he has a brain bleed, so let's keep him in our prayers. Keep Anita in our prayers, too. She's traveling today, so keep her in our prayers. She said the family keep them in your prayers. Yeah. Um, Remember Patsy Hopkins. She had a grandson that passed away, and she was in Ohio for the funeral. Okay, Patsy Hopkins. Uh, grandson passed away, so keep, keep that family in your prayers. We got several traveling. Okay, other travelers. Uh, Joyce and uh, and Ashton are traveling today to, I think it's John Hopkins. It's on Messenger. Some of you probably seen it already. But keep them in your prayers as well. They'll be traveling. Anyone else? Dan, I'd like to ask prayer for uh, addicts fighting addiction. For what? For addicts that's fighting addiction. Oh. Yeah, I continue addicts to remember the many addicts. And yeah, those that are recovering, Lord, uh, we, we need to ask for prayer for them as well that they can continue uh, to keep to keep straight and keep out of out of the uh, their addictions. Anyone else? Yes, hey, Brenda. Who? Brenda. Where are we? Okay, Brenda and her family. Okay. And an unspoken for a daughter. Yes, Radafair. What? Keep okay. Keep Radafair and Reda Fay in your prayers as well. Anyone else? Dan, remember my nephew Thomas Hudson. He's got to go through a couple more surgeries yet. So. Okay, Thomas Hudgens. His nephew. Keep him in your prayers. Continue to mentor. Yeah. And the family of uh, Randolph Frederick, we need to continue to remember them. Doris and Chan and Chuck, they're, they're uh, going to be busy making arrangements and things, so keep them in your prayers as well. Okay, Jimmy Bailey was able to go home? Yeah, he was able to go home. Okay. Uh, prayers, prayers do work. Yes, they do. I know for a fact. Anyone else? Brother Dan, Tim and I went and visited with his sister last Sunday, and she's in a memory care unit in Brazil. And please keep her in your prayers. 
Okay, that's gay. No, this so. is Helen. Who? Helen. 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 Okay. Keep Helen in your prayers as well. Mm -hmm. Tim's sister. Anyone else? If not, Dan, you know. I'd like to ask a prayer for my wife, Amy. Okay. For his speedy recovery. Uh, she, she's uh, kind of twisted her ankle a little bit there, didn't she? <laughs> I did not kick her, despite what despite what David might say, the pharmacist, I did not do that. Um, anyone else? We just sang a song, says, Brother, it's time to pray. You know, and we think about when it might be time to pray and when it might not be time to pray. We usually have prayer several times when we gather together on Sunday before Sunday school. We have one here at the beginning of this service. We have one at the end of this service. You know, but those are times that we might get together and pray as a group. We're going to have prayer out here for, for our meal, and that'll be done as a group. But we need to be ready to pray all the time. It's not something that we do just now and then or on certain occasions. It's good to pray before our meals, at bedtime and in the morning. But if something happens during the day, pray about it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Psalms 55, verse 17. I just want to read one verse here. It says, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. We need to be always ready to pray, always instant in prayer. At this time, we are going to go to the Lord by way of prayer. I ask all the Christians to enter into your closets, shut out the things of this world, and, and talk one-on-one -on -one with the Lord as we ask Brother George Robbins if he'd come up and lead us in a word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? God, our Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful, Lord, for this time that you have blessed us, God, to come together this morning, Lord, and sing songs of praise unto thee, dear Heavenly Father, and to lift up your high and holy name, Lord, above everything in this world. God, we're so thankful, Lord, that you loved us good enough that you sent your only begotten Son who came to this world, Lord, and walked and talked and preached his own everlasting gospel, Lord, and laid his life down upon an old rugged cross and was laid in that tomb and came forth <clears throat> victorious over death, hell, and the grave and said, Because I live, you can live also. Father, we're thankful this morning for each precious heart that is here today. Lord, we pray that we've come, Father, with one mind and one accord, that we've come this morning with our cups turned up right, Lord, that they would be filled and overflow here this day, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, and we Pray today if there's one here that's out of the ark of safety, Lord, that they would think upon time and eternity, Lord, and where they might enter in, Lord, that they would come and accept you on the terms of the gospel, Lord, and be laid in that liquid grave to rise to walk in the newness of life. Dear Heavenly Father, we know, Lord, that you tell us in your word that he endureth to the end, the same shall be saved, your Heavenly Father. And, Lord, we just pray today that you would help us, Lord, as Christians, God, that we would... Stay on that straight and narrow path that leads from earth to glory. Amen. Father, we pray for this service today. We pray for each one that takes a part in it, Lord, that you would get glory and honor out of our lives. Father, what time that we may stay here up on this earth, Lord, that we would be about your business, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for these requests that's been mentioned, Lord. We know that you know our ever needs, Father, before we ever ask, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that your will be done. and the lives of those today that are sick in body, those that are in the homes, hospitals, nursing homes today that needs a touch from you, Lord. We pray for the families that gave up loved ones and shot stripped of them in this life and gone on to meet their reward, Lord. We pray that you bring comfort to their hearts, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, we pray today, Lord God, that you would go with us down through this life, Heavenly Father, and help us, Lord, to stand true to you, Lord, and live a life down here that's pleasing unto thee, that one day after a while, when we have to say goodbye to this old world, Lord, that we can have a home in heaven to go to when this life down here is over. Mm -hmm. Bless the message today, God, as it goes forth, Lord, be food for our souls, that we can live a little closer to you and let our light shine just a little brighter along life's pathway. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this homecoming day, Lord. We count it a blessing and honor, Lord, that we can come together, Lord, and worship you and like-minded people. Lord, go with us, lead directly, guide us through this day, and we'll praise you for it in Christ's name. 
Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, we read in the book of Acts that the early Christians, they gathered together on the first day of the week for communion. That was the reason they gathered. It said to break bread, but it was clear that it, they were speaking of communion was the reason that they gathered together. Well, there's a first day of every week. Just like in the Old Testament, when they're told to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy, that was every Sabbath day, not just not just once in a while on Saturday. Communion is something that we as Christians take on the first day of the week. We have a first day of the week again this week, and we're about to go to the Lord uh, through communion to remember Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Jesus instituted the, the uh, communion himself in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, and it uh, when they were having their Passover meal, it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. The bread that we will partake of represents the body of Jesus Christ, that broken body. It was broken upon Calvary's cross. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The cup we look at is his cup of suffering. The suffering that he went through when he was in the garden. And the fruit of the vine represents his blood that was shed for our sins. Jesus Christ was tempted in all manner like we are yet without sin. He didn't die for anything he did. He died for our sins. Mm -hmm. He was the unspotted <laughs> An unblemished lamb that was made a sacrifice for each and every one of us. While we were yet sinners is when he did that, we're told in the scriptures as well. At this time, we're going to sing number eight. We'll do number eight at the cross. Uh, at the cross, and we're going to ask the deacon delvers and helpers to come forward and serve communion. And their last verse. <laughs> Our communion here is open. We present it to the Christian as freely as Christ gave it to us. So if you're here, this is open communion. Every Christian is invited to partake. partake. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred hand for such a work as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am be all the day. Was it for crime that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond decree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well, might the sun in darkness light and shut his Oh, 
Also, when we gather together on the first day of the week, one of the things we do is uh, to lay by and store. Uh, it's a command that's given in, uh, in uh, the book of Corinthians from Paul to the, the church at Corinth. And uh, I'd like to read from Corinthians right now, chapter 9, beginning with verse 6. It says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As Christians were to give uh, in according to, to our income, uh, and it's up to us. We need to decide. What can we give and give in a, in a uh, uh, not grudgingly, in a, in a cheerful manner? We need to be able to give and understand why we're doing it. We're doing it to help other people. We're doing it to keep the lights on here at the church house and to help people that are less fortunate than us. This time, we're going to sing I'll Fly Away, number 11 in your songbook. We ask the uh, helpers and deacons to, uh, to take up the offer. Think about this as you sound. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away <coughs> to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. life has grown, I'll fly away, just like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. your offering will be used uh, for the building up of the Lord's church and I would like to read one verse from Psalms 119 verse 105 it says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path at this time to bring us the word brother Jimmy Edgeley that takes a little time these fellows, I've known them all since they were little. I watched them come into the church, watched them grow. Now they're preaching. And so now Tom is going to help me because I can't see. I, I, I literally, you're blessed today if you got your eyes. Put your brake on. Huh? Put my brake on. I might get in a big way. You're going to jump out of it. <laughs> Are you ready? Well, he's put me as a reader. I remember um, Brother Willis came from Tennessee and, and did a revival here several times. And 
he talked about working with this gentleman that was a minister that was blind. And he said, uh, you know, he, he knew his scripture and he knew what to say, but he said, we always wondered how he knew when to shut up. <laughs> but he had a watch that was made for that occasion and he could fill his watch, I guess, and tell what time. So we want to welcome everybody here. It's good for me to look out and see all these faces. Uh, I've been pastor here for, I don't know, three or four or five years, and, and it's been a job, and it's been a rewarding job. And, and I look back, and I, and I hate to pick somebody out, but I think this is the first time Harold's ever been here. I grew up under him, and I still turned out this way. Um, <laughs> Harold was my first employer. And uh, I worked for about three months with him, then moved on, but I learned a lot in three months. And so we're glad to have you, Harold, and everybody. We're, we're glad to have each and every one of you and hope that you'll uh, stay. Uh, I don't know about everybody else's house. Boy, it smelled good in mine this morning, so I'm hoping there's going to be a lot of good food out there. So I'm going to start off. Are you ready for me to commence? Read. Read, he says. <laughs> this is in Ecclesiastes 3. It says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. It's amazing how we look at the Bible and how much physical life is tied to the spiritual. Everything has a season. If you look at the trees now, we're full of bloom. In just a little while, we're going to go into the fall season. The trees are going to die because of lack of sap or life-giving things. And then the cruelty of winter. That would represent death to us. But in the spring, here we go. Sap starts coming up. The tree blooms. The next time you look at a tree, and I enjoy looking at that. God put those things here for us to enjoy. And so there's a time and a purpose under heaven. Read. Ecclesiastes 12.1 Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. The process of life and the most dangerous time in our life is when we're young. We think we're bulletproof. We think we have all the answers to life. And in reality, we really don't know too much. But it says to remember the man or the spirit or whatever you want to say that created you, whether by our Heavenly Father he created you and he made you in his likeness and his image. And we all go through the process of sin. He said there is none good, no, not one. You that cannot make yourself good in yourself. It takes a power beyond anything that we have in our life. And yet when we're young, we don't know that. And so it's a matter of trust, isn't it? You want to trust a friend. But you've got a friend you can trust. And then the process of age. I don't love the things I loved at 15 or 16. He said, remember me that these evil days don't come to you. They don't make you bitter. That they don't make you unlovable. You can make yourself unlovable. Even your human mate has trouble getting along with you. Those things oughtn't to be in the life of a Christian. You ought to love each other. As Jesus loved us. Mine and Sue and I have been together 60, I better get it right, two years. Is that right? 
62 years. I was 22 when we came in this church. She was sweet 16, sweet little 16. And I could sing that song, but I won't for you. We came into the church. She had struggled. She wanted to be a Christian. I didn't want to do that because I was having a lot of fun. But I had also become a year and a half later a father. Manasu came into the church. I came into the church. We need to be born again. Have you been born again this morning? Christian, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Have you been saved this morning? Or do you have the same mindset that you were born with? We are born with a carnal mind. And you say, Jimmy, that's not right. A little baby is innocent. The mind has not truly formed. You go to Walmart on a Saturday and watch the two to four year olds. You tell me that mind is in love with God. No, it's in love with what it can get, what it wants. And the mind is carnal. I had a carnal mind until I was 22 year old. Almost 22. And one day in this very place, one day in this very place, he totally, you can believe this or unbelieve it, he turned my mind total 360. And I came away out those doors on that Sunday afternoon. And I didn't hate anybody. I didn't want any whiskey. I didn't want any beer. I didn't want all of those things that I had wanted before. You tell me that that's not supernatural. And on Monday morning, you could go up to somebody maybe that you didn't care a whole lot about and say, I love you. And boy, watch their eyes pop out. I worked with some men, linemen, I don't know why. They have a tendency to get a little rough. You amen that? <laughs> you talking to her? <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. I'm to you. And when I came in that Monday morning, they couldn't understand. I didn't cuss any. I didn't get mad at somebody. I didn't do those things. And they were as amazed as I was. Now, to prove what happened to me and Banasu on that day, we worked in this church. This is our life. This is everybody's place. But I love it beyond description. And that's why at almost 85 years, I've still got the flame of God in my life. Would somebody say amen? amen? I feel better when somebody says amen. There's no fellow one time. He had formed the habit in church. It didn't matter what the preacher said. He said, amen. Don't you do this. Don't nobody do this. But the preacher said, well, I've about run out of anything to say. And he said, Amen. <laughs> I'm going to keep you till you get so hungry. He can't see the clock. I mean, he didn't hold you a second row as far as he could see that. Maybe, I forget. We're going to have a good time. Read. John 3, 1 through 5. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now you think about this man. He is a ruler over Israel. He's a ruler over the Jews, but he's watched Jesus. And he saw all of Jesus' miracles that he done. And he had come to this conclusion. That is not normal. There is something stronger behind it. I like the part where the Lord told him, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. We can't see the kingdom of heaven unless we live in it and are a part of it. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You tell somebody that today. Preachers don't preach it anymore. And it's the most important thing in the Bible about repentance and baptism and walking in newness of life. That's when the change comes. We no longer have the carnal mind that was ours from the time that we breathed our first breath. And if you're not a child of God today, you can't no more see what moves and motivates me. You have no concept of the goodness of God in my life. A power that has kept me when I should have died power that is given to me to say somebody says something to you and you say I love you. Let me tell you something. There's not going to be any hate in heaven. You got it in you now and you take it before God. He'll say depart. I never knew you. You never change. There'll be no jealousy in heaven. If you got it now you better get rid of it. Whatever you've got in your heart right now, when you take your last breath, that will be presented in the judgment at the time of God when he judges all of us. So think about it, isn't it? That's why you pray every day, God, forgive me if I've hurt someone. However, we fall. What's the Bible say? Somebody tell me. Come on. Come on. Don't be bashful. How do we fall? How are we raised? Well, my goodness. Huh? We fall and we raised in Christ. We fall and we are raised. And how are we raised? If we're a child of God, incorruptible. Have you? Simple question. There was an Ethiopian eunuch that had been up to Jerusalem. Now he took care of the princess's goods. I mean, that boy had a he had a big responsibility. And while he was sitting, I don't know if he's waiting on her or what he was waiting on, the Bible doesn't say. But he was sitting in a chariot. And he was reading the book of Isaiah, which is an Old Testament book. It's a good book. You need to read it, but it can be confusing. And he was reading the book of Isaiah. God told his man. God always has a man. God has a man somewhere that he has picked out of their life. You don't preach without being called. If you believe you can, come on, I'll give you the seat.
until the man of God, God said, Philip, go down to the desert to Gaza. That was a Gaza desert, big old place. Read about it. He said, there's a man sitting in the chariot. He said, go join yourself to him. They didn't know each other. But you see the power of God working. It see Philip have power to do exactly what God said. And he went down. And he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man teach me? I wasn't a full-blown Christian on that day in October of 61. I was green. Don't expect your kid, when they get into the church, talk with them, let them grow. And the Bible says that Philip preached unto him Jesus. That's what he's preaching, preaching Jesus. Don't preach nothing else. Get you in trouble. Now here's what the eunuch said. See, there's a connection. There's a tie together. The Bible said he asked. He said, seeing here is much water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? That's what happens when you come up here. We're asking. Jesus said, you are ashamed to confess me before man. I'll be ashamed to confess you before God. Think about that one. Philip said, if thou believest, thou mayest. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? And the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe. That's the good confession that we all had to make if we come into the Lord's church, into his body, his kingdom, which you are a part of today if you're a child of him. The Bible said they both went down into the water. He didn't sprinkle him. He didn't tell him, you're okay. You're okay. You don't need to do that. Man of God will never tell you that if he's God's man. You need to be baptized for the remission. Think about it. It's in the Bible. For the remission of sin. And if you haven't been baptized, sin still follows you. No, you're not. That as many of us have been baptized. That's where we put on the Lord. That's where we get glued to him. And if you genuinely come into the church, you will be in the church. I'm not telling you it'll be smooth. You'll have decisions to make. You'll have problems. You'll have anxiety. You'll have death to do with. It's a horrible thing. It encompasses your whole being. In the period of my lifetime, I've done 523 funerals. That's a lot of hurt. And you hurt with them. Now the reason I do it is if somebody comes to me and says, Jimmy was so and so baptized. I've had to do it. I'll say, let me look at the book. What happened in this revival? Let me look at the book. I've got a little book. It's, it's a desk, I think, and it's got flip sheets. And I compare 22 with 23, tell you the weather. And I can tell you if something bad happened to someone. 
I know where my life's been. And I believe with all my heart I know where I'm going. Because I've done what the master said. I've told his name, shared it with the, with the younger preacher. You're younger than age too, ain't you? Mm. Ain't you all younger than Amen. me? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the question. If Jesus walked through those doors and he come up this aisle and he said to any of us, what are you doing? And you say right here in the book, you said do it. Now you think about that a minute. I know it's, it's maybe far out. But it's something you ought to study about. Are we doing what the Bible says or what I think it says or what somebody else says? You'll never have any peace and tranquility in your life. Do exactly what he says, no more or no less, and you can be a happy person. I don't struggle with anything. Now, if I don't know it, I might struggle with it, trying to work it out. Read. 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. By nature, I'm almost gone. And I laugh at it. Because I know there awaits me something else that's much better. And I enjoy this life. I have a good time. You can have that if God lives in your life, if Christ lives in your life, or you can go around be grumpy, hard to get along with, and the next thing you know, the whole county knows it. Goodness. We can't do that. We can't do it. Paul said, my life is slipping away. He said, I've done this. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. A course that the Lord laid for me before I was born. You might say, now, Jimmy, that's far out. That's all right. We have a problem with that. But I know it. And I'm getting older, and I'm getting these boys way up here. Not yet. Huh? Not yet. <laughs> Paul said, not yet. <laughs> Kevin, you might have a brother. <laughs> this boy takes care of me. Tom does. Dan, they all do. We have a good church here. We've got good elders. We've got good people. We're doing our best do what the Lord said. Nothing more. Nothing less. <laughs> Have you got it right? Have you got it right with the Lord? If you haven't, we're going to sing a song. You get out of your seat. You come up here and before this crowd acknowledge that you have repented in your heart in hearing the word of God. You've repented now you're to be ready to become a Christian, a child of God. Let's do it while we stand and sing. Well, you got time to it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I can get it. Yeah, yes, on the back. Listen to this song, the words. Some times are near, taking men's hearts with fear. 
freedom we all dare now that stay. On your heart to God, saints in the chastening rock, sink away pilgrims, rock, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will be That's a good song, isn't it? Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, the choir today. Where is Tim Robert back there? I have another amen out of you today. That's all right. Now, I want to tell you something. It's 20 after 12. You see that part? I, I get this right eye, just right. Let me slide it in. You still hold the record. <laughs> I beat you about five minutes. So Paul still got the record. Oh. Hey, you got time? No, that's, my smell's good. I'm picking up on some. No, it's time. I don't want to worry you down. But it's it's a good day, and I'm I'm glad I still got a little fire in my belly. Cause I love you. I really do. I'm not just saying that. Whether or not you love me or what I stand for or anything else, I quit worrying about that stuff. And you need to quit worrying about what somebody thinks or what somebody says. God holds the judgment, not somebody else. That's about all I've got. Uh, Tom, who's, who's supposed to lead us in prayer? Well, I'm going to read this last verse that you had oh. down here, but you didn't say, read! Read it. <laughs> just, just read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for God will bring everything work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So we need to remember that. You know, I just sitting thinking as Jimmy was talking, if you don't love everybody, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. No. But that's a test. If you don't love people, you may need to sit down and get on your knees and ask God for help in understanding why you don't and what it is. And we're told in Isaiah 59, and I'm getting to preach it. Go ahead. You've got, ten, you got five minutes on foul. One, one through two, it tells us that our sins are what separate us from God, and we don't want to die with sins on our tablet. So we need to go to God. If we don't love people, 
if we don't have a good time being with Christian people, we need to work that out. So I'm going to hush. But Paul, that don't mean now that you love everything they do. No. I don't believe I said that. I need to say that too. Because you'll say Jimmy Dog and everything. We will not be having an evening service here tonight. We want, uh, we're having a meal here in just a moment. And I want everybody to go out and enjoy that with us. Enjoy the day. Anybody else have anything you want to say before we dismiss? Paul, or uh, Paul, I appreciate your help. Tom, you're a good pastor. You we, care we've about got a people. lot of good people. You here. care about your people. We've got a lot of good people here. We have, but you're doing the right thing. Pastor, right. that's different. I'm going to let Paul dismiss us in a word if he will. Right. Don't you go. Wait, wait a minute, you got something else. If everybody wants to take their songbook to the fellowship hall. Yeah. I think Jimmy's wanting to do some more singing. He's not singing up today. We'll see how much he eats and then how much he sings. <laughs> Take it home with you if you would. How did, we'd like for you to have it. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to Thee once again, Lord, and we thank You, Lord, for this great message that we've had. We thank You, dear God, Lord, for the love that Jimmy has showed through the years. For this congregation and His people, most importantly for You, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you, dear God, Lord, for the word, dear God, Lord, that he brought to us today. We pray, dear God, Lord, that we take this word and we apply it to our lives, that we see how we live, and then let you guide and direct our path, Lord, from day to day. Mm -hmm. Lord, that once, when this life is over, as Apostle Paul said, for me to die is to gain. Mm -hmm. There's gaining on the other side of the por of the portal. Yes. When we stand before you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we've done all that we can do, we've said all that we can say, that you will, will in, in, let us enter into those kingdoms that you've gone to prepare for us. We pray, Father, Lord, for those that don't know you as their Savior, Lord, that the word that they've heard today, Lord, that they may penetrate their heart. Yes. And that they'll accept you before it's ever lasted too late. For those that knows you, Heavenly Father, will take that word and to let it instill in their hearts and grow from it. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will guide, lead, and direct us through the remainder of this week. We pray, Lord, that you will comfort the hearts of those that are bereaved, Lord. Yes. Of Terry and Randolph's family. We pray, Father, Lord, that you'll comfort them. Their time of sorrow and red face. We ask you, dear God, Lord, to strengthen us and guide us each passing day as we go out through this world, Lord, that we be a light for you, that you may shine within us. Guide and protect us as we try to trust and faith in you. In Christ's name, amen. 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 We now offer a free correspondence course. If you would like to participate, please write to Lacey Creek Church of Christ. Attention to Dan Hittipole. 993 Lacey Creek Road, West Liberty, Kentucky, 41472. Or you can email us at churchofchrist at Creek at gmail.com. Be sure to include your name and your address.